Rastuittavarich and welcome to Wargame European Escalation. I'm Hob Gerling and will be playing through the single player campaign's third mission, Pit Stop. The votes in the thread were even, both for and against unlocking the paratroopers. The same happened with tanks with one extra vote against using the first line units. So we'll be going to war with what we now have. Signal interceptions have revealed the presence of three Polish company command posts in the area. We'll have to engage and destroy simultaneously if we want to prevent them from supporting each other. But before that can happen, we'll have to secure the refinery. And here we are with the first objective being objective area Gregory. We need to call in some troops, get set up and prepare for the assault. I'm just going to call in a few platoons of tanks, a few platoons of infantry and some supporting units. The refinery area is huge. It's mostly urban territory, so it's a good good place to, to stage infantry ambushes. I'm going to try and be as careful as possible with my units, but I once again can't afford to take too long because the Polish rebels will constantly send in more reinforcements. The longer this fight takes, the, uh, the higher our casualties will be. I'll also try to isolate the refinery from Chariton, if at all possible. I want to minimize the amount of reinforcements the rebels can send to Gregory. Unfortunately, the three objective areas at the north end of the map are, as of now, out of my reach. I don't really have any anything I can send there just yet. So if the reinforcements start flowing in from there, we might be in trouble. In addition to the upgraded T-72A tanks, which are the basically the same tank as T-72 with an upgraded fire control system. I also called in a couple of BRDM armored, armored scout cars, which is a good thing. We spot enemy artillery right away and the mission graciously gives me a couple of paratrooper units right uh, at the beginning. I'm going to try and use the Paras as a mobile reserve reacting to whatever threats to my main unit uh, or my main group of units. Taxi, taxi, 
this should be easy enough. The peon artillery guns don't have any supporting units with them and if I get close enough they can shoot back. Also the supply trucks going with them are unarmed so I don't expect any casualties from this engagement. Just to be safe I'll send a couple more infantry units in BMPs. My main force will have to hold south of Gregory while I'm taking care of the artillery. Assaulting the refinery headlong is not really an option here. I'm starting to run low on units. I don't really really want to waste any more men than I have to. The MI-8 TV transport helicopters are nice helicopter units to have. In addition to being able to carry the paratroopers, they are armed in true Soviet style with a lot of dumbfire rockets. They should be able to stun and rout lightly armored units and soft targets. While I expect my paratroopers to be able to handle most of the most of the opposition, it's still nice to have a backup. And we take our first casualties. The Motostrelki infantry does well anyway, taking out a couple of tanks and APCs in the forest. We locate the Bion guns. They don't have an escort, so this should be simple. That's the last gun and since we capture the supply truck we should be fine here. I'm going to use the supplies myself and reposition the paratroopers. I'll keep an eye on Chariton. The other para unit gets to remount the helicopters just in case I need to redeploy somewhere quickly. Need a guardian angel? We spot a couple of Huey gunships above Gregory. I don't really have enough anti-air and the Poles seem to love helicopters so just in case, I'll try to take out the Hellos from long range with my Kub missile system. The Shilkas will have to provide a close-in defense for my units. I don't want to go uh, hello hunting with them, but if the enemy gunships try to close in, it's good to have some firepower available. Our scouts have not seen any enemy units just yet, so we can slowly creep forward. I'm trying to maximize the available firepower when we meet enemy units. The units we have on the field are rather low quality, so it's better to try and have as many of them shoot at every enemy unit as possible. And 
and that's the last enemy gunships down. Once again, the ATGM carriers, the enemy so much loves, are present. Fortunately, my infantry men should be immune to their missiles, so I'll just send a platoon of infantry forward. If they meet any resistance, I'll decide then if I if I want to call the tanks in. They are well armed and should be able to take care of themselves in the close terrain of the of the refinery. And it looks like the enemy is trying to send out some flanking units near Chariton. I'll have to send in my other team of Paras to harass them and if possible destroy them. Strela 2s are old surface to air missiles. They are in this case carried by infantry. If I'd been silly enough to send in gunships to the refinery area, it would have been a nasty surprise. As it is, they are no match for my infantry. I'll start engaging the enemy tanks with my MI-8 hip helicopters. Even if I don't manage to destroy them, it's good enough if I can stun or route them away from the area. I really don't want the enemy to try and flank my units advancing in on Gregory. The enemy CV goes down, and now we only have to take care of the combat units still occupying Gregory. Fortunately, I have plenty of infantry available, and my tanks are closing in. Somewhere on the west edge, an anti-tank team is firing at us. I managed to get the Shilkas out of line of sight, but the BMPs are not so lucky. Still, now that they have re revealed their positions, I can send infantry in to finish the deal and take out the missiles. Leading the charge in Gregory are SU-122 assault guns. They are old, old support guns from Second World War. They have a 122 mm cannon where the unit gets its name from and they'll be used in direct fire capability during these missions. While an individual SU gun isn't that powerful, when you mass eight of them, they can still take care of themselves. The Fagot anti-tank missile teams are now destroyed and most of the enemy units in Gregory should be either dead or driven away. Looks like I can now occupy it with my own CV. 
the enemy counterattack in Charitan has faltered. There's still one T-62 tank, but that should pose no problem to my units around the area. And that's the last of the tanks. I'll need to take a moment here. I want to secure Gregory, resupply and reorganize my units, and prepare the advance towards the three Polish headquarters mentioned in the intro. We get a couple of hind gunships to assist us, but they won't live long, looks like they hit the hornet's nest. That's quite a large amount of enemy units. I don't want them flanking me while I'm trying to take out the HQs, so it's better that I attack now myself and try to destroy the enemy forces at our east flank. I'll send uh, two platoons of tanks and some empty BMP-1 IFVs to see what, what sort of um, force the enemy has. I'll also call in some more units and decide decide after smashing the potential enemy counterattack what what should be done to approach the three main objectives I'm pretty confident my units in Gregory should be able to hold against any enemy counterattacks. Uh, two tanks are no risk, but if the enemy comes in force, I may have to call in more reserves. The close terrain of the refinery is excellent ground for enemy infantry. I should have called in a scout to go with those tanks, but for whatever reason I didn't. For once my supply status is pretty good. We are holding two FOBs in Gregory, uh, one near our starting sector, and we have plenty of supply trucks available to us. We should, should have good amounts of ammunition available for our tanks. That's good. I really can't afford to waste tanks just because they run out of ammunition. Looks like the enemy tanks we saw earlier are approaching Chariton. We'll do the same thing we did with the previous counter-attack attempt. We'll send the MI-8s to stun the enemies finish the fight with their anti-tank weapons. Good. 
I'm trying to sh spread out my units advancing on Fedor some some I don't I don't want to send all of my tanks along the same road in case there's a, another infantry ambush waiting somewhere also when we finally hit the enemies it's good to have a wider firing line than they have at least that's the theory. We may meet some enemy light tanks who don't really have enough penetration to be any real danger to our T-72s. The Polish paratroopers, Spadokroniarze, are a bigger risk, but they are quickly taken care of. platoon of intra infantry will join us to si sniff out any enemy ambushes near Fedor. The terrain is pretty close so I'd prefer not to blunder into enemy forces while making my approach. Any counterattacks the enemy tries to make here is welcome. The enemy tends to send in his units piecemeal, so I can easily kill a couple of tanks, resupply, and then move forward. Also, looks like my BMPs have hit some enemy defenses. That's mostly anti air more Strela missiles and some old Kamats trucks with 23mm cannons. They shouldn't be any sort of problem for my units. More enemy units are attacking but my tanks are well posi positioned. They could attack with double the size of my force and I should be still victorious. The last of enemy anti-air units near Fedor goes down. I probably would be safe now sending in the Paras but let's move in with the tanks and see what we can do with those first. The last of the enemy units in Fedor in our sights should go down pretty soon. Meanwhile, looks like the enemy is sending scouts toward Gregory. While the PT-76 light tanks are not a problem, they most likely means the enemy is scouting out our positions and judging whether it's viable to commit to a counter attack. I would love to kill the scouts as soon as possible, but it looks like we don't do that in time. The enemy has decided to make a push for it. The BTR-70 Zalos 
are a prototype unit that doesn't exist in the real world. It's an anti-tank platform uh, somewhat similar to our BTS-1 from the previous campaign. Uh, it's an effectively uh, good, accurate, powerful gun on a weakly armored, fast platform. The charging in with Zalos is essentially throwing them away. I'll take all the Zalos I can get that way, trying to dig them out with artillery and tanks is always hard, much easier to destroy them while they are on the move. Looks like the enemy has a couple of UAZ SPG-9s recallless rifles mounted on the Soviet version of Jeep. Not much of a threat, but still I'll deal with those once I have enough time. As of now, the units at Gregory will have to defend while I sweep out Fedor. My previous assessment about the safety of Fedor to our Paras seems to be mistaken. The enemy has a Kub missile launcher of their own and a CV hanging at the east, cor east corner of Fedor. I'll send my tanks in and take them out. They are they are effectively unarmed against tanks, so after those are taken out, we should and have secured the area. Looks like our tanks are not yet in firing range, so it must have been some other unit that was still manning the objective area. Well, no matter. The important thing is that we now control the objective. The enemies keep on coming. That's good for us. The more enemy units I can destroy in their piecemeal counterattacks, the less I have to deal with when I start making the final push. I'll also send my tanks forward. I'm trying to see if there's a flanking opportunity. Maybe if we can sneak a tank platoon or two at Constantin, one of the enemy CVs would go down easily. That T-80B is bad news. If the enemy has access to first-line Soviet tanks, then we may be badly outgunned here. Our old support guns still perform admirably. Their kill lists for this mission will be huge, as most likely will be the casual lists once again. If we had paratroopers available, I could have sent some, some units to Elena try and secure the reinforcement route there to call in my tanks from that that way around. As it is, we don't have en enough troops to both take and hold the objective area while a CV is making its way toward, 
towards it. I decide against trying to take Elena. I'll have to keep Gregory, defend Chariton and keep any enemy units out of Fedor. We meet some more enemy anti-air units that go down easily before our tanks. The forest north, north of Fedor looks like it's a good defensive position. I'll try to set up my tanks there and contain the enemy units if at all possible while I'm planning the attack forward from Gregory. Those heavy hogs are bad news in two ways. First, I don't have any available anti-air units with my flanking, flanking troops. And they are not, as you well know, Warsaw packed equipment. That means the rebels have have been getting equipment from Western powers. If they have heavy hogs, it's possible they could have other types of equipment. I'll have to tread carefully here. The poor BMP-1s are in an impossible position. They don't have anything to shoot the helicopters down. Once again, the only anti-air weapon I have is the 12.7mm NSVT machine gun on my T-72s. Fortunately, the enemy gets a bit greedy, tries to approach in too close, and I get free shots on the heavy hogs, which go down. Still, that's four of my BMP-1s down. The enemy just keeps on coming on Gregory. More PT-76s uh, approach from the east flank. I'll have to call in a couple tanks from the central location and try to contain the enemy attack. Still, the attacks can't keep on going forever. They must stop at some point. It's impossible for the rebels to have enough units to just keep throwing them away like that. My BMP-1s are roughly equal in combat ability to PT-76s at that range. They have a 76mm cannon, I have a 73mm cannon, and both sides are effectively unarmored against the opposition's weapons. That's not really a good thing for us. I'd prefer us having a superiority either in weaponry or armor. My T-72s work well against the light tanks, but we've lost four more BMPs here. It looks like the enemy has some artillery units available. I need to call in some of my own to start the counter battery fires as soon as possible. I'll try to drop a couple of shells on the Regalus rifle jeeps, see if I get lucky. I tried to send in some Shilkas to assist my tanks. 
but the results of bad scouting are plainly visible here. My tanks are getting hit by enemy artillery and most of my shilkas die when they blunder into enemy forces. My only choice is to push forward with the tanks that I have. Their morale is shaken, they are out of machine gun ammunition and they are almost out of fuel. But if I stand still, they'll just be bombarded to death. It's better to try and make a last stand here. The enemy has more forces than I anticipated. I'll have to call in some support. It's once again Paras to the rescue. The last Chilaka goes down and I'm down to six tanks now. Once again the helicopters stun the enemy. That's a really bad position to be stunned and panicked. I think most of the attacks against Gregory should be over now. I'll slowly start pushing forward first with my infantry, then with my armor. I might as well defend the refinery on its north edge. That should be just as good ground for my units. My T-72s are in poor position. The situation is made worse by their lack of fuel. I don't dare move them from their current positions. If they run out of fuel while relocating between positions, they'll most certainly be dead. This way I can at least attempt to dodge if the enemy starts firing artillery on top of my tanks again. Instead I'll have to take out the Sheridan light tanks with my helicopters. They are almost out of ammunition, so if I don't destroy them here I'm running low on options. The M551 Sheridan light tank is an interesting project. Uh, it's an US built light tank that is famous for being airliftable and a total design disaster. It was supposed to have a 152mm cannon that fires a good HE round against infantry and anti-tank missiles to deal with the enemy armor at the extreme ranges. The Shilalag missiles that Sheridans have, however, proved to be somewhat of a disaster. The tank is also too heavy to be lifted by any helicopters at the time of its introduction into service. The only Shilalag missiles fired were in Iraq war 
apparently against some Iraqi bunkers which didn't move. Not the most threatening opposition, which of course is good for us. When we get our units forward, we hit a bit of uh, luck here. We capture an enemy supply base, which means we can repl replenish our ammo supplies. I'm trying once again to put some supporting fires down with my artillery, but aiming at moving units with them is mostly a waste of ammunition. The Poles have a lot of good quality stuff. It seriously starts to look like the Americans have sent, have sent some sort of uh, paratrooper regiment to aid the Polish rebels. I can see Sheridan tanks, heavy hogs and M106 mortar carriers. I wouldn't be surprised at all if the artillery present at the, the battlefield is American also. Additionally, the Poles have looted some of our good armories. They have T-80s, T-64s and other good stuff while we are working our way slowly forward with BMP-1s. T-72s and some old Second World War leftovers. Looks like this is how, lo how far I can comfortably push. I really hope my attack won't run out of steam just yet. In any case, at this point I think more anti-air is needed, so I'm calling in some Strela teams of my own to beef, beef up our defenses. The artillery has to work overtime. I'd love to drop some strikes on the enemy held objectives, but unfortunately I don't have line of sight on them. That, that means that my probable impact areas would be so huge that I would be completely ineffectual. At least this way I can harass the enemy units that are stationary. With any luck I managed to land a strike on enemy counterattack that is still on the way, but don't count on that. By now it's purely luck if I hit anything. I'll try to sneak in close with my paras. If I can get someone, anyone, to get line on sight on those objective areas, I have lots of spare points and lots of artillery available to me. I'm hoping we don't have to push forward to the final objective areas. It would be easier to just bombard them and destroy the CVs that way. Once again, my core units have suffered enormous losses. I'm starting to r run low on ammunition and fuel, but I don't really have enough time to 
resupply and reinforce my troops. The enemy can keeps sending in more and more tanks to attack against our positions. That's a couple of rocket launcher vehicles. Before those are taken out, I can't advance to the enemy objective area. If they manage to start shooting on my units, it's going to be a disaster. Fortunately, the enemy counter-attacks have faltered. The tanks come in in ones and twos. We should be able to hold up our positions, but that's not good enough. Somehow we must muster enough strength to push forward. That's one. And two. Both both enemy rocket launchers have been taken out of action. Now I can try and advance towards Ivan. Looks like a disaster is going to strike here. Fortunately, I have some Strelas available and the enemy helicopter hasn't seen us yet. I think ordering the VDV troopers forward into that forest is a mistake. Paras while elite units can't really withstand a sustained assault. It would have been smarter to try and flank, flank along the river. Now I ru run the risk of meeting enemy tanks starting their counter-attack. The M109 A2 is an American-built artillery piece, so looks like the Americans are in it for real. Even with support from the MI-8 helicopters, the paratroopers are in trouble. Two more Zalos to deal with before I can advance on Ivan. And then a disaster strikes. An unlucky stray, stray shell kills my friendly troops near Ivan. Whatever plans I had to, for using them as artillery observers, I must now forget. Looks like the other para squads fared no better. They bumped into enemy counterattack on the way. All my paratroopers are now down. I still have the helicopters available, but whether they can hold such a sustained assault remains to be seen. I don't think they can, and in any, any, any case they are starting to run low on ammunition. The enemy reserves, on the other hand, seem limitless. I'll have to take whatever aim shots I can get at the enemy forces. While 
while it won't hit those troops. Maybe if there's more more units coming in, I can get get that hit at those. I'm starting to run out of reserves to call in. My last desperate attempt is calling in some more scout vehicles. They'll have to do something of a suicide run to get the line of sight at enemy held positions. A couple flights of hind gunships will have to bolster my defensive lines while I try to get eyes on enemy held positions. The fight here has bogged down into a fight of attrition. Whoever has the will and the units to keep fighting will win this one. And I'm starting to run really low on units. I'm practically out of tanks. I'm down to less than 10 infantry teams in reserve. Especially the anti-tank assets I have are running critically low. I fortunately still have some extra reserves for that, but if I have to resort to infantry and the tank teams, the final push to those objectives will be a complete nightmare. Scouts will have to start their suicide run. I can't spend many tanks on this. Two will have to do. Fortunately, that's enough. I get eyes on enemy enemy headquarters on Leonid. The attack on Ivan proceeds a little better. There's not much enemy defenses around the area. That's helpful, especially since all my artillery assets are committed to taking out the CV at Leonid. And now it's a game of numbers. If we manage to land a hit nearby, even more tanks from the enemy join the fight. My scraps will just have to do the best they possibly can here. There's not not much to say. This is the last hurrah of my troops. Either we make it now or we'll never make it. The scout spots the enemy CV. That was a good hit, but no, no enemy CV down. Still, my tanks should be able to kill the enemy headquarters at Ivan. I only have two more, two more areas after that, and looks like our artillery manages to land a strike on the enemy positions at Leonid. Only Constantine remains. Unfortunately, that's the most defended of the enemy positions left. Yeah. 
I'm trying to land a uh, bombardment strike on the edges of Constantine. While my tanks don't have any ammunition left, they can still act as scouts. It's effectively suicidal to send them in, but I don't have any any other units nearby and I must act quickly. If the enemy calls in more CVs from Constantine and retakes Ivan or Leonid, I am lost. I'll have to assist the assault with my hind gunships. More enemy troops are organizing for yet another assault. A lucky stroke for us, we see the enemy CV immediately. Our helicopters will have to take it out. Just in case they are unable to do that, I'll send my tanks in to act as a scout for artillery. It may cost me a couple of tanks, but it's worth it. And the last Polish headquarters is routed and we win. Once the great refining capacity of Pluk is secured, Warsaw Pact troops move quickly to the Czech-Polish border. Once again, we are victorious. All our objectives were completed and we destroyed four times as many units as our own casualties were. That's not much of a consolation, but still our troops performed very, very well. The next fight we'll be having probably sees even more American units. So the vote will once again be special. As usual, I'll be posting the vote on thread. Feel free to cast your votes there. This is Hope Gadling signing out. Peace.